Hi, I'm Sylvia. I'm in the Ford School Board, and um, I've been to Kaizen for quite a while, and I really like to do it. I just want to share with you guys a little bit of an experience in our family, where I keep telling my kids I need to move back to California because I'm the one that's from Paris. My son. <coughs>
can, and he asks us to can or bottle fruit and vegetables from your gardens and orchards. Learn how to preserve food through drying and possibly freezing. Make your storage a part of your budget. We urge you to do this carefully and do it now. One thing I think is really good about dehydrating your foods is if there is ever a power outage and you have a freezer full of food, well, guess what? You're going to be dehydrated. Well, you can't dehydrate because the power's out. Plus, you can do it solo, but that'll take longer. But yeah, this you don't have to worry about. It's going to be preserved. You don't have to worry about having electricity to keep it frozen. So it's a good way to store your food instead of in the freezer. The nutritional value of dry foods. Um, by drying it at a low um, temperature, it keeps the nutritional value. If you over put something too hot, it's going to cook out the nutritional value faster. Uh, nutritional value also is we can get fresh uh, food from our produce, from our gardens. And if you're buying it at the store, you're going to want to look for fresh, crisp fruits and vegetables. You don't want to get things that are old and kind of on its way out because the old saying is, what you put in is what you get out. If you're going to put in so-so food, you're going to get so-so food back. If you put in the freshest and crispest part, you're going to get the best flavor back. This past week I do a lot of strawberries. Strawberries are in season right now, but very tasty. So then strawberries come back really tasty after you dehydrate them. Another disadvantage to those is they only have one, you can't set the temperature on them. So they only dry at one temperature. That's true. They only have one temperature, one size fits all. And that's not true. If you want beef jerky, you're going to need a higher temperature. If you're going to need fruit leather, you want a lower temperature. So that does tend to be a problem. Sometimes you can scorch your fruit and it does stuff in the shell or overcook it. This is a little tray where you can spread out your fruit, fruit leather on. You can also use plastic to do that. This one is a dehydrator where the fan is in the back. So the air, the fan blows the air forward. So everything's blowing out that way. The, the um, odors aren't getting mixed as much. They can a little bit. One thing you don't ever want to mix like garlic or onions. 
with fruit. Or peppers. Or peppers. The odor this smells very strong and it will permeate everything. Um, what brand is that? This is it's called Excalibur. It's a very it's awesome. I absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best. It is probably one of the best. It temperature control. It does have a temperature control all the way from... But not all Excaliburs have temperature control. Yeah, no, not all of them do. They have other ones that don't have that. Where do you get them? Online. 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 It's a couple hundred and, dollars. Yeah, I think they're about $250. I bought one from Oh, that's really good. I got mine for 30. 30 from somebody who sold it. Where's that? Somebody who's selling it. What's nice about this too, and probably all of them don't have it, is you can get it with a timer. So some things take 20 hours, 18 hours. Well, you know, you put the stuff on, it's time to go to bed. You're tired, but it's going to be done before you get up in the morning. So if you go to bed, it's going to be overdone. So it has a timer where you can set the timer for anywhere from two hours to 20 hours. And it will, it will shut off on its own. If it's not done, does that one have that? Mm -hmm. Yes. If it's not completely done, and you come back and say, oh, it's not quite done, you can still turn it back on again and finish dehydrating it. That's not a problem. Do you need to rotate those trays? No, you don't need to rotate the trays because on this, like the heat's them. coming from the back and going forward, so it evenly covers all the trays. Show them how the trays compared to that one. Like that tray has a rigid tray. And this? Yes. This one, start out with this. And it has a screen that you can just put stuff on. And then you can put your fruits and vegetables and meats on here like this. Then if you want to do fruit leather, well, there's different things you can do. You can cover, if you don't want to put them you can take plastic wrap or um, saran wrap or something like that and cover the trays and spread your fruit leather out on that. You can also get Paraflex, which is like a type of parchment paper, and you can spread it out on that. I got this, and I don't particularly like it because it's paper. It gets wet, you know, like paper gets wet and kind of gets wavy. And that's what this did. I'm like, mm, I like this. But anyway, I had gotten these, and they're just plastic sheets. They're washable. You can leave them. And you just put them on there, and then you just pour your stuff on here and, and spread it out. So, where, where do you get the sheets? I online. also ordered it online when I got the dehydrator. But you can go online and just order the sheets if you just want the sheets too. The thing that's really nice about those flexible screens is that you'll find that like tomatoes, yeah. they'll stick to your screens and or your trays. And because it's flexible, you can just pick it up and kind of bend it yeah. and it pops off. It's really a lot easier than the than the rigid, the rigid kind. Ones, they're harder to get them off. Once they're on there, it's like you're scraping it off. Sylvia, they want to see the door that goes on the front. It's just a little door, and it just hangs right. Your trays are open. will heat up your house in the summertime, so just so you know that, even yes. though it's at a low temperature. And she told you about garlic and onion and peppers. We do not dry those in the house. They only get dried outside because they really smell up your house. Well, not only that, I did onions 30 years ago, probably. And about 10 years after I did the onions, <laughs> my kids were sick and I was wondering if you a fire in that room. <laughs> Guess what? Come out of the wall. That room smelled like onions after all those years. It's no good. Just uh, all you have to do is type in Excalibur in your uh, search engines and uh, just shop because I got mine for uh, probably about forty dollars less than most places are selling. That's good. Yeah, shop around. But, yeah, they, they come online. Your electric bill? Um. No. Not a lot. Well, not a lot. She, she asked if there was a difference in her electric bill. Yeah, it won't go up. Um, that's one of the things we'll talk about. They are more economical than if we're going to try and do it in the oven. That overly costs a 
Well, ovens don't go low enough. Yeah. Unless you have an oven that goes down to 140, you can't really use your oven. But we'll cover that in just a minute. Um, also, you can do air. Yes. Now, do you do, I mean, does it matter the temperature in the winter and the summer? Does it change the temperature that you're doing the food? It doesn't change the temperature that you're doing the food. It does change how long it takes to dry your food because of humidity and temperature. And we'll be covering that in just a minute too. Okay. We can dry it in um, with the air outside. He would, you could build something that had a screen on it, something that would be protected to keep the flies and bugs away. And you put it out. You're going to want to make sure you put it out. Now, California, there's probably no problem. Um, Florida, that can be some of those places. There's a lot of humidity. This won't work. Too much moisture in the air. And so that's one of the things. If there's a lot of moisture in the air, it, it wouldn't work. But these will work if it's like a hot, breezy, warm day. Not a lot of humidity. There's solar ovens. Again, that works with the sun. That raises the temperature up a little bit about 20 degrees. Um, you mean a solar dehydrator? Huh? Solar dehydrator. Yeah, okay. Solar. <laughs> solar dehydrator. Um, it reflects the, the, the light in and it heats that up about 20 degrees warmer. And so on a warm day that you can do those outside too. Um, one thing with just doing it outside, it takes much longer. Sometimes it takes a few days, even up to a week, to do high risk stuff. When we were originally doing pistachios, my son was doing them outside, and it would take several days. And then, of course, you have to bring them in at night because there's, it, it's a little more humid at night and stuff. But you can do this in a day and the high risk. It will take you know, three or four days to do them outside. Um, bring them in at night, take them back out the next day. So. It does take a long time to do my house, do it outside. That's a homemade one. Can you see? Okay. <laughs> and some people even put them in car inside your cars where it gets really warm like in the, in the back window. Dashboard. Back dash. <laughs> Back window, something like that, so that would keep them really warm. But you can make homemade ones. Um, here's where you can do it in the oven. You can do them in your ovens also. The oven, like I mentioned, has to be 140 degrees or lower. Most ovens, I don't actually know any of them actually would go that low. But if yours does, you can go ahead and use your oven. That's a good way to start with. If it would go that low, it's not very economical because it does use a lot of um, I'm guess we going to jump ahead. Here yep. it is. Horizontal airflow to high air. We just remember that the air comes from the back. That's what this one is. The air flows forward, covers all the shelves equally. Versus a vertical airflow to high air. Where this is where it does vertical airflow. This comes from the bottom and goes up. And so then we have to rotate your shelves so that the food can dehydrate. Non-fan dehydrators. Okay. That would be your oven. You can, when you dehydrate in an oven, you would leave the door open a few inches, and you could put a fan by your oven going in. And I think that would cool it down too much. Ovens are going to be very tricky to work with, but um, they are non-fan dehydrators. Um, the ones you do outside. With the yeah, air and the heat. You only can do fruits outside, not vegetables. Yeah, they don't get hot enough for um, fruits and vegetables. For fruits and vegetables, you need to have a lot of them. Crispy. Also, if you have a lot of crispy. Also, fruits have a higher sugar content and higher acidic, and so they can be dehydrated at a slower rate and stay. Help, you know, not get the bacteria and stuff. 
meat and fruit, I don't have that option. The vegetables. Oh yeah. <laughs> meat and vegetables, they need to have constant heat and an even temperature, otherwise they can breed bacteria really fast because of your food to spoil. So you wouldn't want to do only foods and uh, foods outside. Solar oil. Oh, another way to dry food is on the vine. Uh, a very popular one with that is grapes. When you leave them on the vine, what do they turn into? Raisins. You can also take those grapes, though, throw them in your dehydrator and make raisins in a day. Or you can leave them on the vine and dehydrate. Another good thing you can do on the vine is beans. Um, you know, your kidney beans, don't use that for Leave them on the vine until the vine dries up and, and they kind of sound hollow and they dry up. And you take them out and process them after that. So those can be left on the vine to, to dry. Dehydrating may be easy. Just skip it. Just skip it. It's a mandolin. Some kind of mandolin. A mandolin. A mandolin. mandolin. Is that the it, new style mandolin? Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. So it's got different ways. And you can slice them different thicknesses, ruffled edges, different things like that. But when you're using that, you can get even slices. So even slices will make your food dehydrate evenly. If you don't, you can open it up, take out what you need to take out, put the rest back in to dehydrate longer. But it's just easier if your stuff is more uniform in the size. There's one of these, and we'll be using this in just a little bit too. But you can take this. Tool to slice 
Just use the tablecloth. Where would you buy something like that? At the kitchen store? Is that at the mall or at the outlet mall? Yeah. Over the outlet They're not very expensive. They work really good. And they're the perfect thickness. Yeah. And that's what I use for dehydrating uh, slicing the strawberries. Because this little tool. So that works really good. Oh. That's just a different kind of mandolin. Yeah, different kind of slice. If you're doing strawberries, one of the cheapest things you get is the uh, thing that you uh, that do hard boiled eggs with. Uh huh. That works that really works good. That works too. Yes. It really works good. Yeah. Did you hear all hear that? Um, the thing that you slice the hard boiled eggs with, that will work for strawberries. Strawberries. Oh, and then the meat kind of work for us. Well, that works a little bit harder. Yeah. After you take the pit out. <laughs> After you take the pit out, yes, definitely. You have to get that out there. Um, a lot of foods need to have to be, have to be um, prepared. Pre-treated. Pre-treated. There's um, another slide for that later, look. Sylvia, there's a slide with it on it later. Oh, okay. And then you need, like we discussed, discuss trays of some sort, if you're gonna make fruit leather. Well, these are all tools that you could use. Um, a lot of foods need to be blanched, so you would need bowls, you would need pots, uh, scoops. Depends on what you're doing, what tools you're going to need. And uh, something to marinate your bowls in, maybe, or marinate your meat in, bowls, plastic bags, whatever you put your meat in, marinate your meat. So there's tools that make the job much easier, and you don't have to spend a lot of money. You can find ways to do it inexpensively. Rules to follow. Dry food as soon as possible after picking to maximize nutrients. Thin, uniform slices dry faster and most evenly. Place food in single layer, not touching other pieces. Follow directions given. Allow approximate drying time given. Check food. It dries much faster at the end of drying, of the drying period. That's definitely true. You sit there and you're working out, it's drying, it's drying, it's drying. Okay, getting close. The last 15 minutes you go back, it's all done. You can look at these lemons here. They're a little bit dark. That means they're a little bit overdone. The oranges on the other hand look great. So it's just right at the very end, you do want to keep an eye on it because it, it will go fast at the very end when it's just about done. If you have the timer on that, will that alleviate that problem? I mean, if it's going to turn off? If or does you it turn still it off drying? before it gets too dim, yes. If you don't go over. But does it still keep drying once it turns off? No. No. Okay. It'll stop drying. Okay. What it will do, though, is if it's not completely done, you can come back and, and dry it some more. So, like, mm -hmm. if you think, oh, I need to have it turned off at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I'm not going to be up. When you get up to six or seven and it's not quite done, you can turn it back on even and continue to strike it. Uh, if you go over the book, it could cause you trouble because <coughs> the time varies in drying depending on how thick you slice it. Yes. And also some vegetables or fruits like tomatoes and things may have like romas is a lot different. There's a lot more liquid in the other tomatoes than there is roma. Exactly. So that's only a guide. The, the timer is nothing more than just the sodium guide. There's so much difference in the time for the same type of vegetable. Yes. Like fruit leathers, and I was going to talk today about this, and her hand out here, it said 15 plus hours for fruit leather. I'm going, there's no way. <laughs> you wouldn't have that, they would be burnt. <laughs> um, I can see if you if you did it like an eighth or a quarter inch thick, but you can do it thicker, it could take six hours. I, when I do it, it usually takes three and a half hours, roughly, something like that. Well, I usually do mine probably. Um, 
it's just that's how Lucy likes it. So make it that way for her. I guess I don't. But that's how she likes it. You know, just to peel and fry it. Um, dehydrate foods that process for the same amount of time and temperature together. You may not want to do fruit leather that takes three hours versus grapes that could take 18 hours. Or pineapple takes a long time. It's just easier to do things that take about the same amount of time. Drying <laughs> times can vary anywhere from four, to four hours to 48 hours. Now, I've never done anything that took 48 hours. What takes 48 hours? No, it would be like whole things. Like uh, plums would take that long if you were making, you know, prunes. They would take a long time. Um, yeah, prunes would take because they're bigger. Um, Big chunks of pineapple chunks. would take a long time. Pineapple takes a long time than ones in little chunks. They are very... Um, drying, this is where we're going to talk about um, what she asked. Drying time varies according to the humidity. So if there's a lot of humidity, it's going to take longer. If it's dry and there's not a lot of humidity in the air, it's going to go faster. It depends on the temperature. If the temperature is 20 degrees or 110 degrees, which way do you think your dehydrator is going to work faster? It's 10 degrees. So there, the time's going to vary. It could be a little bit faster than if you're doing a long, cold, rainy day. So it's not always the same. Once you think that are you using the, uh, the oxygen packs, or are you using that, that lid thing that we'll get to We'll get to that later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, it also depends on how thick you slice it. A lot of things are going to be somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch thick. Depends on how you like them. Um, if you like your beef jerky thinner and crispier, and if it's, the, if it's thinner, it gets more marinated through the whole thing. If it's thicker, it doesn't tend to be as, it's more chewy. I like it thicker than thinner. So it just depends on how you like it, but usually somewhere between an eighth and a quarter, quarter of an inch, where you would slice your beans and fruits and vegetables. Also, another thing that, that is dependent on is your food touching each other or do you have a little bit of space between all your food? And also, how packed is your tray? If you have your tray and you just have a few things on there, it's going to go faster than if you have just lined up really, really tight. Like the picture. Like the picture. That's going to take longer. So it depends on how much food's in there. Is it touching or is it just loosely sparse? You know, it's like your oven. If you have like four different things in there at Thanksgiving time it takes a little bit longer than if you just got one thing in there. Same thing with your, with your dehydrator. dehydrator. And it depends on what kind of dehydrator you have, how long it takes too. If you have the ones with the fans do tend to work a little better, a little faster because it blows the air through, through all of it. Or the other ones have to be rotated. When you're rotating it, you're opening it up moving things around, which then has to reheat it back up again. Or this one, you don't have to open it and keep checking on it, or two inch shelves and stuff. Do you mostly use your dehydrator in the house, or in the garage, or I use best? mine in the house. Mine's you in the house, too. You probably do it either way. Like I said, though, if you're doing onions and garlic, you want to do that side. I would suggest not doing it in the house, <laughs> unless you want it to smell forever. <laughs> but it does smell really, really good. When you're dehydrating in your house, and you're doing pineapples and strawberries and even the beans, it really makes your house smell good. I mean, it smells like you're cooking something, you know? So, and the onions do too, it smells good. But then you don't realize that it's getting into everything. If you're doing apples, I found out it's a lot better to dip them in a, in a uh, lemon solution so that they don't turn brown. Yes, there are some fruits that you do need to Different something to keep them from turning dark. Oh, and then flat turtle there. That's called um, case hardening. Case hardening. What happens is if you put your fruit in there and you think, oh, I want this to get done half the amount of time, so you turn that heat up, it's not going to work. You're going to cook the outside. And as it cooks, it's going to get hard. It's going to kind of like create a shell over it. And it's going to reject the heat going in to cook the inside of that 
fruit from me or whatever. Which you're this doing. then can cause bacterial. Yeah, it, it won't get that inside done, and then you're going to have bacteria, you're going to get mold, you're going to stuff. It's, it's not going to work. So you want to be sure that you do keep it at the proper temperature. That's what's a little bit more difficult with these. It's one temperature, there's not a, a choice on temperatures. And um, to, to, one, to avoid a case hard. Are there books that tell you how long to do all this stuff? Yep. Yep. You even can find it online. Oh, well, in my website and in the handout we have yeah, stuff too. Yes, it is in the other handout. You can find anything online. Absolutely. I don't think there's anything you can't find online. You have to hide it out because you're going to something specific or any of that. But yeah, the books will cover almost the whole, the whole subject. This one's called Preserve It Naturally. And when you get a dehydrator, it comes with a little, little basic book. But you can purchase extra. So we'll go to a lot of detail. Okay, I'll let them pass. Drying fruits. You need to wash your fruits, get them cleaned. If they're strawberries, you need to um, take off the green tops. You need tools. If you need, this is a really good thing. You can peel and core your apple and just, sh -sh -sh -sh, it's down. It saves some of your money. So you want to prepare your fruit, fruits. Um, separate them. Um, apples need to be uh, treated. Peaches need to be treated. Um, some things like cranberries, you need to crack the skin on before yes. you dehydrate them. They are big. They will turn out like that. But you can just blanch those for a little bit and uh, crack them. Pre treating. There's several ways to pre treat. Um, the bananas that I did, I did in pineapple juice. You can do them in vitamin C, which is called. That's a word of this. Yes. A fruit fresh is another one. You can dip it in a honey dip. Um, pectin. So there's several different ways. Um, when you dip it in honey and lemon juice, it is going to make your stuff sticky. Yes. That's why I can tell with your banana chips now that you say that. Oh yeah, they're a little bit sticky. They were sticking together a little. It's because of the pineapple juice. They're in pineapple juice. Mm -hmm. well, pineapple, the banana ones were also dipped in pineapple juice, but they were dipped in coconut. Oh. And that stuff was sticky. The other ones were a little sticky because of the pineapple juice. So they do need to be pre-treated. Pre what is the vitamin C crystals? Vitamin C crystals, yes. You just dissolve it in water and dip your fruit in it. You can get those at the health food stores. <clears throat> um, free treated fruits, grapes, blackberries, cherries, cranberries. Not tomatoes. Oh, tomatoes maybe with the skin. I don't take the skin off mine, do you? So I don't take my skin off and I never treat them. Yeah, me I neither. just slice them and they turn out fine. See, this is where experience comes in, because this is a list I got before I was really dehydrating, and now I'm like, I wouldn't pre-treat my tomatoes. Grapes, I've never pre-treated grapes. I've done grapes. So, but if you get frozen blueberries or uh, raspberries or something at the store, they're already treated. You can just throw those on your tray and go away from them. Um, you can also blanch certain foods. Like peaches, you might want to take the skins off. So when you buy frozen food, you just put it on frozen and start uh -huh. dehydrating? Yes. Yep. You don't yes. do anything to it? Nope. Vegetables so cool. too. You and can buy it on sale. Your, mm -hmm. Yeah. When you blanch your foods, you're going to put them in the boiling water, then you're going to take them right out and you're going to put them in ice water to stop that heat. It stops the enzyme process. Yeah. So you're going to, you're going to dip them into ice water to pull them down real fast. How to tell if it is done. Cut several pieces, or cut several pulled pieces in half. So you're gonna have a question for you, sorry. Um, so when you buy the frozen food, do you thaw it first or no. do you just no. put it on the tray frozen? Just put it on the tray frozen. Cut several cool pieces in half. You want to let them cool. Um, you want to make sure that the fruit has no visible moisture in it. Not sticky or tacky. Now the bananas are sticky, but that's because of the pineapple juice. Mm -hmm. And place it in half and they shouldn't stick to itself. That's if you just we're not putting other stuff on it. Um, apples will go well that way. Conditioning fruits. Now when you're when you're doing your fruits, 
your tray is spread out in different spots. Some might be a little bit thicker pieces, some are a little bit thinner pieces. Um, so some might be a little drier than others. So what you do is you put them in a container, close them up and leave them for a few days. And what happens, it conditions it. It'll take some of the moisture. Some pieces might be drier, and some people pieces might be more, more moist. So it just kind of sits them all in there, and the drier ones will suck some moisture from the ones that are moist, and so they'll all become even in their consistency. And that's called conditioning the fruit. I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> oh, okay. Let me go. I'm sorry. When you're doing your fruits, and, and we can do that too, some pieces might be a little bit drier and some might be a little bit moisture when you take them off the tray. Oh, okay. Maybe the ones on the edges, you know, can be drier oh, and the ones in the middle. This is after you've dried them. Right. After you've dried them. You're going to put them into a container mm -hmm. and put the lid on and seal it. And then that moisture will stay in there and it will kind of redistribute disperse through all of it evenly. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I'm looking up. Okay. It just naturally does it. If you can it in the if you can it in the jars afterwards, it will just naturally do that. There's nothing you have to do to do it. Uh, drying vegetables. You gotta prepare your vegetables. Get fresh, crisp vegetables. Okay, these are from my garden last year. Nice. Those zucchini. Yes. And <laughs> zucchini. There's tons of that. We plant here today. Oh, I had properly. six. You've got to wash your vegetables, you've got to prepare your vegetables, slice them, clean them, cut out the pores, get them ready. Um, then you can slice them using, like we did on the tomatoes or one of these things. I used my meat slicer when I did my zucchini last year. It went oh, really yeah, fast. That really good for zucchini. Uh -huh. It went really fast. Um, <coughs> I blanch mine, she doesn't blanch hers. I don't blanch mine. And I don't know, I don't think mine's brown. No, but that's because you've got a vacuum sealed like that. Oh. Yeah, yeah they, those look they good. They lose their food value if you don't, there's an enzyme in vegetables. There's only three vegetables that you don't, I, it's a pepper, onions, and garlic, you yeah. don't have to. What happens with blanching is it stops the enzyme process so that it doesn't continue to ripen. And so, well, I didn't know about lunch as a kid, so I didn't do it. It tastes fine to me. <laughs> we even eat them like um, chips, you know. I like salt, so you can just, when you put them on your tray, you can put your little salt on your little... So that's because you've them. got them in your bags versus your bottles. But the bottles do have the air sucked yeah. out. you suck the air out. It doesn't suck it out quite as good as the bags, though, unless yeah. you put an oxygen absorber in. Yeah, you can put oxygen in the Okay, that's another slide. Okay. <laughs> All vegetables blanch except for peppers, greens, mushrooms, onions, onions and garlic. Good job, Betty. Betty gets an A. <laughs> I have been dehydrating for how many years? I guess I just want to do a good job on the bunch. I just want to do it. The thing, one of the good things about blanching too is that it already starts the cooking process. So when you go to cook it, it cooks it a lot faster if it's been blanched. And if you buy frozen vegetables, same like with the fruit, they well, not with the fruit, but with vegetables, they've already been blanched before they were frozen. So you can just put them out on your sheet and not have to blanch them. Okay, drying vegetables. You're going to spread them out on your tray, make sure that they're not touching, that there's a single layer. And when you, you can see, is this from your picture? Uh huh. This is Debbie's picture. This is when she put them out on her tray, and look how much is left when she got done. They Not shrink. Very much. So it's, again, it takes a lot less space. All that can go into a simple little jar. Well, actually, a lot more than that. <laughs> yeah. It was like true. six trays of zucchini fit in one quart size jar. That's a lot of zucchini. Yeah, I'm going to teach you how to do that. Oh, We're going to show you. The easy way. Okay, when the vegetables are on sale and you want to go buy some, but you don't have room in the freezer, just put them in, go buy them and dehydrate them and put them in a candy jar or seal them in the Dryness test for vegetables. Dry vegetables until they're brittle or crisp. 
some vegetables shatter if you have a hammer. Um, of course they would probably. Um, and vegetables don't need to be conditioned like fruit does. You're going to completely dry those till they're completely dry dry. Fruits and, fruits and vegetable leather. Um, we did cover that briefly. Um, the different kind of preparing your trays, you can put plastic wrap down. They have these little things here, or they have these here for your fruit leather. Uh, you're going to wash your fruit, fruit and prepare the fruit. And we have done. Um, just real quick, I'm going to put this in. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make strawberry fruit leather. Okay? I've already washed these strawberries and taken the tops off them, okay? It's peaches. Peaches. So you just drop a few strawberries in there. And I just do a few of the ones that kind of tends to get stuck in there. Sweetener to it at that point. And yeah, you can add out. sweetener to it. This is great for diabetic. Um, it's great for us on um, Weight Watchers. It's, it's just it's healthy dried food. fruit. There's no there's no preservatives in there. There's no sugar. There's nothing. So it's a healthy snack. If you went to the store to buy a healthy snack like that, you're going to pay a high price for it. You can buy. They're they're expensive even for the ones with all the sugar and stuff in them. That we really don't want to feed our kids. But if you want the really healthy ones, then you can pay a lot higher price for it. So then you just spread it out on your tray, throw it in there uh, for about three and a half hours. And I will show you about how healthy it is. Another one my granddaughter absolutely loves, it's her absolute favorite, is applesauce. I just take a jar of applesauce and dump it out on the sheet and dry it. We have the applesauce ones here too. You can see how thick this is. And then after it's done, you just peel it off your sheet, just pour it on there and then let it cook. And then when it's done, you pull it off your sheet and you roll it. And then it's just rolled up. And there's the fruit butter. So you can see it's kind of thin. Um, you can make it thicker. You can tear it, you can slice it, whatever you want to do with it. It goes anywhere, and it's good. Kids love it. So, my son's always on his phone, don't give all that junk. So, I say, eh, I'm grandma, I can do what I want, right? <laughs> Jerky. You can use uh, any kind of meat to make jerky. Hamburger, cow, you know, for the beef, uh, buffalo, turkey, chicken, rabbit. Safe handling. The biggest thing with meat is you have to do safe handling with meat. You've got wash your hands before and after before you touch anything else to the meat. There is, let's see if I can find that picture of this. I know what this is. Okay. <coughs> I 
I forget. No. no. It's um, the, I think it was the T. Fork and Wild Game. Trichinosis. Trichinosis. What was that? Trichinosis. Trichinosis. Trichinella or something no. like that. Okay, that's what it is. It's a parasite. To kill it, you need to treat the meat, freeze a portion that is six inches or less at zero degrees or below for at least 30 days. Freezing will not eliminate bacteria from the meat, however, it will kill this. Uh, Parasite. So before you turn it into jerky, you put it in your freezer for like 30 days. Yeah. Before you and that will kill it. And that's in pork and pork. Pork, pork and what? And, wild and any wild game. Yeah, any wild game. So considering you won't have power, that's probably not something. No. <laughs> probably not. So you do have to be careful with something like that. Um, Slice it thin, not oh, yeah. that is. Slice it thin. There again, we discussed we want somewhere between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch, and it will dry really nicely. If you want it, you can cut it with the grain or across the grain. One way is going to make it chewier. With, with the grain makes it chewier. Makes it chewier. So, it you know, you can have either way that you, you want to do that. Uh, keep it refrigerated. When you are working with your meat and you've got your marinade going and stuff and you've got your meat in it, don't leave it sitting out on the counter. Put it back in the refrigerator. You're going to leave it in the marinade for 12 to 24 hours and meat needs to keep, be kept cold. Go down really quickly. Um, also, when you've done. That's your, a bug you get from regular meat. Yeah, that's the bug you can get from regular meat. So with jerky, I'm just going to, I'm going to tell you this part because you might not remember. With, when you're doing beef jerky, you are technically, what the experts are saying is either heat it to 160 degrees while it's in the marinade or when you're done drying it, put it in your oven at 160 degrees for, I forget how much time it's in the handout, so that you kill the bug that would, the, I call it the bugs, the bug that would, that could be in your meat and that's the way to treat it. But by doing that, it does change the texture of your meat. It's not going to be as chewy as it is if you don't do that. So just know if you don't do that, you have the chance of getting whatever that is. Yeah. Sick. And when you also, when you're using a marinade and you've marinated your meat, don't go back and reuse that marinade for another batch of meat. Toss it out and start fresh. You're just asking for trouble and bacteria. Uh, preparing the meat, you want to keep it frozen. Take off the extra fat. Oh yeah, take off the <laughs> extra fat. You do not want fat on your meat because fat will cause it to go rancid. So you want to make sure you get a good cut of meat. Um, London Royal works really well. You can usually get that on sale very inexpensively. It's like the perfect size for jerky. It is, it's perfect. And then you can slice it. If you don't want to slice your meat, you can ask the butcher to do it. Um, sometimes they'll do a good job, sometimes they won't. They'll sometimes slice it on a meat slicer, sometimes they'll slice it by hand. They don't really care if it's not their meat, so some will be good, some will be good. Vallarta does have a beef jerky meat. Uh, it's already sliced, nicely sliced and everything. Big pieces and then you just slice them into strips. It is very expensive though, it's over $5 a pound. So, if you want to go that way, you can go that way makes it easy. Um, when you have your pile of meat, you need to get ready to... He's just slicing it. Just slicing it, okay. Oh, this is, you slice it really thin, the butcher can slice it or you can slice it. That's what the next two slides are. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you can have any, you know, slice it the way you want. Uh, but the butchers will do that for you. You just have to do that. Then you're going to marinate your meat. And you're going to leave it in the marinade for 12 to 24 hours in the refrigerator. And there's recipes that Debbie will have. Um, my recipe is not going to have. She'll probably give it to you. Yeah. But, um, there's lots of recipes. Now, when you're marinating your meat, remember, you want to marinate it. You can go to the store and you can buy a jar of marinade, marinade and do it in that until you get teriyaki or something. But make sure it's marinade, not the sauce. There is a difference.
you want to marinate. So you can buy ready-made marinades and just do it in that. In the refrigerator. Okay. You already said that. Okay. Then you're just going to stick it into your dehydrator. And it does tend to take closer to the eight hours, eight to ten hours, if it's at a quarter of an inch though, than four hours. I've never done jerky in four hours, so I don't know. Maybe that's <laughs> for hamburger jerky or some other kind of jerky. I don't know that. But for beef jerky, it does take a longer amount of time. Then you want to store your food. Um, this is jerky that I just put in a cylinder and stuck it on there. Um, if you're going to leave it, you, usually when you make things, it goes pretty fast. It doesn't last very long. So you're going to stick this in the refrigerator or freezer if you're going to plan to keep it for long term. Otherwise, this is fine to keep it this way. Um, you can put it in buckets. This is not um, mass proof or road proof. That's kind of easy. Oh, dehydrated dinners. I absolutely love this one. This is one of my favorites because if you go on trips, mostly camping, we go camping. Well, we don't have a camper with a refrigerator on, so we have the all ice chest. Well, when we go for a week, you can only take so much. You have to take all the size, things get wet, it's just a pain. So, I can dehydrate, I mean dehydrated soup that we've done several times. Um, split pea soup. It's right here, and this is what it looks like when it's um, out the shelf. It's a little like flakes or something. Then I just kind of crumble it up in a pudding jar. Just add hot water, and there's your soup. Um, spaghetti sauce, um, refried beans. Oh, refried beans is great because I like refried beans. I don't like canned refried beans. So, and I don't particularly like. They're good. I was like Debbie made tonight. They're not my favorite, but fresh refried beans are so great. They just dehydrate them, they reconstitute them, and it tastes great. They're great to take camping. That way, it's easy. It doesn't take a lot of room. You don't have to be refrigerated. Um, you go on vacations. I don't like spending a lot of money on eating out. So hey, we're just in a little hotel sometimes. You want a bowl of soup? Just add hot water. You know, they always have those little coffee pots, right? We never use them, so let's use them for making something like that. But they're great. It's out. Just try it for now. Some leftovers. You take your leftovers, you put them in your refrigerator or your freezer or it's all or whatever. Dehydrate them, and then you've got a meal. You know, your, your spouse, your husband, whatever, you take it to work and they have a microwave. And hot water, he's got a meal. It's great. Um, That's everything you just said, so. I just put the pictures up for you. Oh, Debbie knows the pictures. I just talk. <laughs> you can store, as you can see, a lot of these things are stored in, in jars. And just real quick, it's right. This one's much sealed. So we have a little bit. Oh, I took the thing. There's a thing missing off of it. If you have a cylinder and they have the little yeah, accessories, okay. So this is just a jar. I just put it on. Just push this on. You already have a lid on there? Yes. <laughs> I do, which I'm supposed to. That's why it's in the cup. Push it on and just push back in. Sit up. Oh, what can I do with Now, does that seal in that way? 
some of your dried, valley dried fruits get worms in them. Well, that's not the worms in them. Well, it sucks all the air out, so there's no oxygen left in there, so. We have not had any problem with anything in ours. I mean, that's stuff that Sylvie and I did that's up there. How do you know when it's done? It, it stops. Shuts up. Yeah, and if it doesn't, it's not sealing, is it? I think I pulled the thing out. You pulled what out? I think I broke it. <laughs> not your machine, but just my tube. I have another one at home, so. Oh, okay. It's not hard. It does, it does suck the air out. It normally sucks the air out. And then... You can run, um, the bigger ones are like a hundred and something dollars. You just have to get one that a tube can attach to it. The lid things are separate. You buy those, they're about $9.99 each and they come in regular and wide mouth size. Oh, I have it. Here, sorry. I, I'm advancing it for you. If you don't have a seal a meal or a sealer, how can you uh, make sure your jars are closed and sealed? You can't. You can't. Okay. Not you can't dry can them that way. I didn't think you so. can put an oxygen absorber in with them, and it will get in. And if you had your lids hot, that might suck it down. Mm -hmm. But you really need one of those attachments. Okay. And Debbie has one. It's over there next to yours. Oh, okay. That's just really expensive that you can do get to do something like that with. It's just to put on No, it does bag. It's stored in leather bags and these little plastic cylinder bags, uh, buckets. There's lots of ways of packaging and storing your dry foods. But you do want to find a way of packaging them. You want to do it right away. You don't wait for a month or two because it's going to be losing nutritional value. Well, not only that, it starts getting soft. You yes. want to keep it nice and dried. Have any of you ever opened up a can of, especially the strawberries, and you don't use them right away, mm -hmm. and they get really soft? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what happens. The moisture absorbs back. They get rubbery instead of yeah. crunchy. Uh, shelf life of the hydrated food is one to 30 years. The things that affect that are oxygen, how the darkness, the heat, and humidity. Light. Yeah, humidity. and light. Uh -huh. um, we can handle most of those here in California. I can handle the light. I can handle the oxygen. I can handle, you know, humidity is not too often back here usually. The heat, that's something I can handle. I would love to have a basement to keep things cool because that heat is the number one thing that other uses for dehydrators, you can do um, raise your bread in it, you can make yogurt, you can dry bread for croutons, you can um, dry your mittens, you can dry noodles. Yeah, you can make homemade noodles and dry those. Um, you can do dry flowers. So there's a lot of other uses besides food that you can use your dehydrator for as well. Um, resources. You can go online, there's YouTube, there's Winnie DeWitt, um, cookbooks. I just like to go online for everything. Anything you could possibly want is going to be online. The Lord has said, gather and save the produce I put within your reach and prepare against a day of want. New skills, new blessings. Um, it's such a great way of adding to your basic food storage, dehydrating yeah. and canning. You know, and this is a skill that is not difficult. It's easy to do, but it can really benefit you and benefit your family in more ways than one. Like Debbie said, creating, adding stuff to your food storage, being able to eat healthier, uh, foods and snacks, and what you can purchase. So rehydrating, rehydrating, what do you, how long do you soak that stuff? Yeah, we just talked about that in the last class. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. There again, it depends. Like, but just the soup, it doesn't take very long. But because there's ham in it, it's going to take a little bit longer. Now, 
And you cooked that before and dried it. You mm -hmm. cooked it before you oh, dried yeah. it. Oh yeah. This was just like, it would be considered like one third of your stuff. I made it specifically to the potato. So you made it thick. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't make it no. Oh. I just made my regular split pea soup. And then, how did it? She poured it out like I did the, the egg mixture on the trays. You just pour it out on your trays yeah. and dry it. Um, you can do this with spaghetti sauce with um, anything. You won't want to do like chicken noodle liquid water soup. But, you know, fruit loaves, anything creamy, you can do that. You can do leftovers, you can do gravy, you can do cas you know, rice casseroles. I've done, I've done, I've done a casserole, I've done a casserole before. It's stuff, rice and vegetables. And it, and it rehydrated okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Just a reminder. Is that it? Uh-huh. Yes. You rehydrated something with sour cream? Sour cream. I have not no. dehydrated. No. You can't dehydrate sour cream stuff. Never have. It's got very well. oil in it, doesn't it? Well, I mean, you know, we have sour cream powder we talked about in the last class. That's just dehydrated sour cream. So you can do it, but I wouldn't recommend it doing it at home just because it'll probably, it can get sour, more sour. <coughs> Milk products, I don't know that I would do. I didn't think yeah, about that. But you can do like yogurt, fruit, yogurt roll up things. You can spread you out can yogurt. Do, you, can, you can spread out so, yogurt, make yogurt roll ups. I don't know. But I want you guys just to realize how easy it is. Slice the bananas, dip them in something. But I just sliced the, the tomatoes. I just sliced the lemons. I just sliced the oranges. Frozen foods. Um, tomatoes I put into the went into a food processor and ground them. You know, just blend up fruits. You can do this with vegetables too, by the way. You can make vegetables. Can you do that with potatoes as well? Yes, you can do it with potatoes. You can buy hash browns or frozen french fries and you can throw those on the dehydrated and dehydrated those too. Okay? Any other questions? Okay, we're about four or five minutes over, so yes. <laughs> uh, if you take and dehydrate potatoes, can you then grind them up and make a powder out of them and make your own powdered mashed potatoes? You know what? I've never done that. There's no reason why you couldn't. Uh, fresh yeah. potatoes do not dehydrate very well. You have to blanch them. You have to blanch them and they have to be treated. Yeah, potatoes would need to be treated before those turn real fast. Oh, they turn. So you're mm -hmm. better than true. Okay, well, I just encourage all of you to try dehydrating. This is a good way to start out, you know, just to see if you like it or whatever, or if you want to put This is awesome, let me tell you. I love it. Debbie loves hers. Do you love yours? Everyone loves it. It's totally worth the investment. Okay? Thank I you. I say this in the Jesus Christ name.